Voters in Ohio have rejected a proposal that would have made it more difficult to change the state's constitution. Abortion rights supporters are celebrating the outcome of that vote, and that's because there's a ballot question on enshrining reproductive rights in the Ohio Constitution in November. So for more on this, Finn Gomez joins us now, friend of the program. He's also CBS News political director. Finn, good to see you. Um, so this Ohio vote we've been covering for a while now, um, and I know it was kind of nuanced, but essentially this was sending a huge message across the country uh, that even in a conservative state like Ohio, um, this is an issue that is mobilizing voters. And I'm curious, you know, from your reporting and from what we've seen throughout this year, you know, this seems to send a message to Republican voters that this is a real potent issue in politics. Yeah, and it's still galvanizing uh, forces uh, against the, uh, even in these, like you mentioned, like in, even in your own reporting, of course, in these, in these Republican strongholds like Ohio that has become increasingly a red mm -hmm. state. And mm -hmm. when you're seeing this, uh, uh, this, uh, this alliance of uh, progressives, of Democrats, of women voters, of of even moderate Republicans coming and, and showing that they can come out uh, in a state like this, uh, mm -hmm. in a state that Donald Trump both 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 uh, last last two times by eight points, mm -hmm. uh, I think it shows yeah. that they can really do. What does that say um, for the national landscape and other battleground states? Yeah, it's really interesting that you mentioned that because when you look at Trump, you know how Trump did. He won that state by about eight points, and um, in every county, we saw that um, this measure. Um, Un, you know, overperformed or un, underperformed his numbers. So right. that shows that there's, you know, some bipartisan uh, support here. Um, it, Democrats definitely see this as a galvanizing issue for them. The question, though, is can they sustain it and does it necessarily translate to support for Democratic candidates? Um, that seems to be a challenge for the party as well, kind of keeping that up. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but I think, I mean, I think this this was a big question following last year's success. Remember, uh, the Republicans' underperformance, one of the main reasons it was accredited to uh, was because of the reversal Roe v. Wade. Mm -hmm. Now we're looking, now we're here in, in, in August, ahead mm -hmm. of this November race, and it's still galvanizing folks. It still has mm -hmm. this power to do that. And really, mm -hmm. um, if, you, if you're looking at some of these numbers, that in, in some of the, just some of these results show that Republicans are struggling to adjust mm -hmm. on how to do that, how to counter that in these states. So I think even yeah. though uh, we're, you know, a couple of months from November from that from that mm -hmm. election uh, mm -hmm. where, where that the constitutional amendment will be on the on the mm -hmm. ballot. And again, the, the, the main uh, election in a year from that November, yeah. it's still it's still fueling voters to go out to the polls. Yeah, and that's a really good point, too, because, you know, Ohio is probably the only state that will have a ballot measure this year. Right. But next year, other states are working, including Arizona. They're trying to get something on the ballot right. in that big battleground state. And big speaking of state. Arizona yeah. being a big yeah. battleground Oof. state for the presidential, but also a huge Senate race that we've been talking about for months, uh, looking into that, um, Carrie Lake, Republican who ran for governor, was unsuccessful, but is a Trump acolyte. Um, is kind of putting it out there that she may be running for Senate. Um, that seems to run counter to what Republicans have said about trying to focus on candidate quality. I mean, what kind of impact would that have on the race? I mean, yeah, like and you're absolutely, absolutely right. Even NRC Chairman uh, uh, Senator Daines basically said that, you know, it, it might be a tough climb, uphill climb for her. Uh, by the way, CHP, she still hasn't said, conceded the, her, her loss, their gubernatorial loss to Katie Hobbs right. from last year. I mean, this is someone who is, who is like the ultra MAGA, uh, you know, candidate in, in that state where the McCain Republicans came out and voted for the Democrat against her. I mean, is that really the best candidate that Republicans have to have in that battleground state in a 2024 cycle? And, it's a, and it could be a three-way race, you know, between yeah. Senator Kristen, uh, Kirsten Sinema mm -hmm. uh, running as an independent now, and, mm -hmm. and, and likely uh, Ruben Gallego, the House Democrat, who has been galvanizing progressive and, and youth and Latino voters in that state. Yeah, absolutely. And you mentioned um, Senator Daines, who chairs the NRSC. He actually sat down with Major Garrett recently. I want to play a little bit of their conversation because it speaks to exactly what you were talking about. You want to make sure you're focused on the future. They don't want to hear about grievances of the past. They want to know what are you going to do to address the problems of this country and looking forward? 
So Kerry Lake's not someone you would see yourself and the committee supporting? Well, we've, we've had conversations with Kerry. Long conversations. She, she, she was a, here. Uh, she sat down with you for several, did. Yeah, yeah. almost we, two we, hours, we had, as I we understand. Had, we had a very good discussion about uh, you know, what, what's it mean to win in Arizona and talking about the future, uh, casting. Was she receptive? To, she was. It, it, was a, it was a very robust, it was a good discussion. So he says that she was receptive, but what she's been saying on the trail suggests otherwise. And she's been out there campaigning. I mean, she was in Ohio, for example, campaigning, and she's been out there a lot. Um, this seems like an issue that the party, you know, needs to address, but they're really tiptoeing around it. Right. All signs seem it seems to indicate that she is going to be running uh, and, and staffing up and, and for a launch in, uh, potentially in October. So, I, look, I, I think, you know, if she is being receptive, I, I don't know how receptive as you said, she is being to that line of thinking, I think. And you, yeah. as you mentioned, she has been at all these big conservative uh, you know, gatherings throughout the, the cycle. You've seen her, mm -hmm. you know, on, on Newsmax and all these other uh, uh, right wing yeah. outlets where, you know, she she is speaking to a base that really adheres to that um, yeah. very, you know, very, uh, very MAGA Base, and if uh, of Trump is the nominee, um, you know, she'll be out there a lot. Uh, speaking of if Trump's the nominee, that is kind of the big yeah. question facing a lot of his rivals right. as they're preparing for the debate stage. We've talked a lot about making the debate requirements in terms of polling yeah. and uh, donor thresholds, but there's also a debate qualification that isn't talked about as much, and that's signing this loyalty pledge. And Vivek Ramaswamy, who's, you know, gained some interest among voters, um, has said that he's the only candidate so far that's actually signed that pledge to support the eventual nominee. My question is, how does the RNC actually enforce that um, at all? I mean, is that kind of just a phony pledge at this point? Well, you know, they say that that it has real um, it has a real impact on those who do not sign it, right? Mm -hmm. um, I, I do think, um, you know, it's the last of the criteria after they hit the 40,000 unique vote, uh, uh, donors, after they mm -hmm. after they, they hit the requiring bowling, uh, polling st standing in the, in the pollings that they uh, acknowledge, uh, but like, you know, Vivek has signed it, but others have been hesitant or have been very critical of it, including Donald Trump. Mm. Like, you know, Will Hurd has, has, has been critical of it. I don't know if he's going to make the debate stage with that criteria. But others, you know, uh, like Chris Christie, uh, if they don't, uh, if they don't sign it, you're right. Does it have the teeth to really yeah. stop uh, a candidate, a candidacy in this race? Does it really have the teeth to really dissuade someone? And, and, and the fact of the matter is we're still waiting to see if Donald Trump goes to this first debate. It's only right. a couple weeks away. Kate. Yeah, and whether he'll sign it. Uh, Chris Christie yeah. has said, you know, and he'll take it, it as seriously right. as Trump right. did yeah. the last I mean, time just, around. So it kind of speaks to it. But to your point, I mean, the broader question of are these candidates, you know, they're dancing around the idea of whether they would support Trump if he were the nominee. So just a couple weeks to go until that big debate, and we'll see what happens then. It's Finn a Gomez, wild thank cycle, you yeah. so much. Absolutely.